Hi, and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman. Today I'm gonna to be working on a quilted jacket. I had purchased this quilt at an estate sale, and I am really anxious to get it put together in a quilted jacket. You've probably seen some of these out on the internet. They're just beautiful. I am going to use the new look pattern. It's number 6585. And I just got this at Joann's. You can often get patterns at Joann's when they have a sale. But this is the pattern I'm gonna use. I have enough fabric to make the coat B. Um, I was thinking about going with C, but I think I'm gonna go with coat number B. I don't have enough fabric for the longest version, but I am gonna go ahead with this. And I am gonna line my coat as well. Let me show you the lining. I went searching through my stash of fabric. I have a ton of garment fabric and lots of linings. Um, the, I probably wouldn't have to line this. Uh, this is already, you know, the quilt obviously has a backing there. But I decided um, I think it'd be easier getting the coat on and off if, if it had more of a rayon lining to it. So I went through my stash and I found this. It's a bright pink and I needed a lot of it. This is only 44 inches wide, so I needed over four yards in order to have enough for the pieces that I'll be laying out on this quilt. The quilt itself is about 88 by 80 inches and it's, it's a summer quilt. It's um, kind of old and frail in some areas, which I like. It's um, a, a beautiful old quilt. And I love the, the blocks and the fabrics that they used. You can feel more of the light batting on the center of the quilt than on the outside edges. It's as if, um, I'm anxious to get inside and see what kind of batting they had used um, in that some of it is not on the outside edges, but it's only on the inside edges. So we'll check that out when I cut into the fabric. So I started laying out the pieces here. I've got the quilt um, folded lengthwise on my cutting table. It's gonna be impossible for you to see everything at once because there's just so much here and my equipment doesn't uh, share all of it. But um, this is the front of the jacket. And so this portion right here is the front. It does include the hood. And so that I've got laid on here, um, length of grain here, and it's pinned down. This is the back of the jacket and it's on the fold. So I have it pinned on the fold. I have one that I'll be cutting of this and two of these that I'll be cutting. And then I'll have to do the markings for the pockets and so forth. And I'm, I'm really getting excited to see this jacket finished. Now what I'm going to do is pin, there's a little extra fabric over there and a little bit on the other end. I'm gonna move this uh, piece of fabric here on my cutting table so that I can add my two sleeves and the pockets. I've cut out the jacket, uh, the pieces. This is the back piece right here. And I found once I got into this and started cutting that, um, as I mentioned, this is a quilt that I got at an estate sale. And whoever made this quilt many, many, many years ago had enough batting for the center of the quilt and um, all around the edges, around 20 inches or so, all the way around the edges, there is no batting. It's just the backing and uh, the, the top of the quilt. So she just made use of what she had. I was curious to know how, how it was put together, but there's batting in the center of the quilt and not on the edges. So it's um, gonna make for an interesting qu uh, quilted jacket, but I'm looking forward to having it finished here. This is the back which I cut on the fold. These are the two fronts, and this is the arm right here. And then this is the hood. So that will be sewn together and will create the hood. And then she did have some issues with some of the fabric literally disintegrating back here. And so um, I will be lining this jacket so that we won't have to worry about that. So I will have that pink lining for everything. So now I'm gonna, I do have the, uh, sleeves cut out as well. I've got the front sleeves and the back sleeves. And then I'm going to uh, get the pieces for the lining cut out for the back, the fronts, and the sleeves. And then we'll start sewing the jacket together. I have my jacket pieces all cut here. I've got my pockets, two pockets and the lining. And I have my lining pieces here. So everything is cut and ready to get started. And again, this is the coat that I'm making. It's the B um, 
length is what I'm making here. It does have the hood, as you can see, and it's got pockets on the front. So this is the two front pieces, and I'm basically going to be stay stitching this area right here. This is where the hood uh, begins. It looks kind of odd, but it will make more sense as I work with it. And then I'm going to be lining this jacket. Um, I'm also going to line my pocket. So this is the first steps that I have. There's some stay stitching and working on this pocket. I will be uh, doing the lining. And then we'll continue putting the sleeves in the front and the back together, as well as the back of that hood. So I'll sew these steps and show you what happens here within each step. The pattern regarding the pocket simply just has you press it over and um, stitch it so that it, it creates its own um, seam. But I'm not going to do that. I wanted to line my pockets. So I cut out a lining that was literally, let's see here, a little bit shorter than the actual pocket. I sewed it to the top first, then I turned it right sides together, and then I sewed this outside seam here. And this is gonna be uh, stitched into the side seam of the jacket. So when I flip this open, I'm gonna turn it, I'll have to press it. Gotta get my iron out and press it. So um, this is the pocket itself. This will be in the side seam. So this is gonna be um, disappeared into the side seam itself. This is the pocket. I've got to finish uh, turning it properly and get that point out here. And then I'm going to top stitch. I'm going to go up and find some thread, some pink thread that I'll be using for top stitching. But that's how I've chosen to do my pocket because I want it lined. And the inside of the pocket is going to look like this. The top half is the um, fabric flipped over. The lining is here. And then this will be sewn into the side of the jacket. Here are the two pockets. I've turned them right side out. I've pressed them. These are the tops. These are the sides. These seam allowances will go into the sides of the jacket. And I want to top stitch um, here and here. And then of course I will be top stitching the pockets onto the front of the jacket. So I'm just auditioning some threads here to see what I like in which color I'm happiest with. I don't know that you'll be able to see these threads very well but um, there's just four different shades of pink. And I think I might just go with this. It gives it some pink, but not too much. This one I think is too dark. These are so light you can't really even see them. I think I'm gonna go with this one just to give it a little bit of contrast as I top stitch this. So I'm gonna get these top stitched to the front of the each piece of the jacket, and I'll show you that. Just to give you an overview of what I'm doing now, I have traced my markings on to the front of this jacket, and there is a notch here that I can also match up. And what I'm gonna do then is eventually I'll top stitch this to the front of this jacket. Before I do that, I am going to top stitch close to the, or edge stitch, I should say. I'm gonna edge stitch all the way around, and then I'm gonna give this a couple of rows of stitching uh, to secure the top. Then I will bring it over here to this jacket front, and I will uh, top stitch that onto the front of the jacket. I am gonna uh, baste this um, section here to the garment, and uh, that will eventually be in the seam allowance. I'm gonna baste here, and then I'm gonna come around and do a top stitch. Excuse me, I'm gonna stop right here. Baste down here and sew all the way through up here, and I will back stitch there uh, very securely, and then my pocket will be attached. The pockets have been sewn on, so they're ready to go. Now I need to sew the hood. So here is the top of the hood, and I'm gonna be stitching this area right here. I'll get that done, and I'll show you everything when I'm done. So here is the hood. I've just sewn that all the way around, 
and um, now I'm going to sew the sleeves on. I'll bring it to the table so it's easier to see this. So this is the back of the jacket, and now we're going to sew the sleeves, the back sleeves. There's front sleeves and back sleeves. I'm going to sew those on to this jacket. So I'm simply going to locate them and pin them right sides together on the back. So I will be pinning them right up here, and then I'll be sewing those on to the back. I'll sew that, and I'll be right back. Here is a glimpse of the back of the jacket with the back sleeves sewn on. And it's just um, really cute. So now I'm gonna sew the front of the jacket with the front sleeves, and I'll show you that in a minute. All right, I have sewn the sleeves on the back, I've sewn to the back of the jacket, and the sleeve fronts have been sewn to the sleeve backs. And the next thing that I'll need to do is sew the front two pieces of the jacket to these sleeves. And then of course, attach the neck where the hood will be. So let me do that and I'll show you what that's gonna look like. Here is the front of, or the jacket. This is the jacket back. This is one sleeve, that's another sleeve. Now I need to attach the front of this jacket to these arms here. The neck has to be sewn around there. That's the hood right there. So I'll be pinning that and stitching that. And then this will get sewn to that arm. So I'm gonna be stitching this first of all. I'll go ahead and get that stitch and bring it back. This is what I have so far. This is a front of the jacket. These are the pockets down here. And hopefully you can see this up here. Let me scoot this down. So this is the top with the sleeves here, and they're not yet sewn. The side seams are not yet sewn. They will be sewn here shortly. This is the hood right here. There is the hood that is attached. You can see it like that, and it's been attached around the arms. It is part of the front of the jacket. Make sure that it's in view here for you. So it's part of the front of the jacket. These are the sleeves. When I press my sleeves, I haven't done the pressing for the front of these sleeves yet, but I always make sure to use my pressing ham. Let me grab it. Here is the pressing ham that I use. I've got a different shapes and sizes of pressing hams, but it, it's very helpful as you uh, put this along the seam allowance. In fact, you're gonna wanna do it on the inside, and then I'm pressing my seam allowances open, and then I press um, the seams over the ham with my iron. So that is how I'm doing that. Now I'm not finishing any of the inside seams because like I said, I'm going to line this jacket. If you are making this jacket without lining, and that's how they, um, the instructions are given without lining. Uh, but so then you'd want to make sure that you finish your seam allowances, either with a zigzag or if you have a serger, or whatever um, option you have. Um, you can pink everything as you cut it out, so that helps as well. But I am lining mine, so I'm not worrying about finishing the seams. Now I'm going to make the lining for the jacket basically the same as the front. I obviously don't need to do anything more with the pockets. They're already done, but I'm going to make the fronts, the backs, the sleeves, put it all together, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach the lining to the jacket itself. I've put the lining together. The lining pieces for the jacket are identical to the front of the jacket. Um, I'm not done anything different with them. Um, I may have to uh, turn them in a little bit more when I uh, secure the front of the jacket and the bottom, and you'll see that here when I get to it. Right now, I'm just showing you, I've, I've pieced everything as I've shown you before, but I've also uh, pinned the inside underarm and the inside seam allowance. So I'm gonna sew that on both sides of the lining. I'm gonna do the same on the jacket itself, and then I'll be ready to attach the lining to the jacket.
I have the jacket sewn. Uh, the lining is not in yet. I wanted to identify how much of the front of the lining I would need to remove. So if, if you look at this jacket, um, it's supposed to fold under about an inch, and that's the facing on each side. Um, the pattern talks about uh, turning it under a quarter of an inch, stitching that down, and then folding it over like another inch and then stitching that down. I think I'm going to need to bring it in more to mm, about two inches, I think, because it's it's really uh, pretty big. Um, although this is a size small, it's a pretty good size jacket. So what I need to do then is reduce the amount of um, the front of the lining that I have. So I will have to reduce that same amount um, along the front of that lining so that when I sew it to the front of this jacket, then I'll be able to turn it back like this. My lining will be on the inside and it will look very nice and finished. And it's kind of hard to explain that. I'll show it to you as I go through. But I'm going to go ahead and take this up to the iron. I'm going to press a nice um, crease all the way around the front of this jacket, all the way around, around the hood and down each side. It's going to have about a two inch crease. I'm going to do the same on the jacket or on the lining, excuse me. And then I will have to reduce some of that extra bulk from the front of that lining. We're going to see how this works. I have um, folded back the lining about three inches and the front of the jacket that facing is going to be about one and a half to two inches. Hopefully that will finish out the lining and the facing beautifully. This will, I think, make more sense once I've actually got it sewn. Everything is pinned all the way around the hood, down each side of both fronts. I'm going to go ahead and stitch it and I'll bring it back to the table and you'll see what it looks like. All right, I have sewn it. Now I want to turn it right side out. And I need to get the lining sleeves into the sleeves. All right. So this is what I was hoping would work. And I think it's, it's working out beautifully. Look at that. So the facing is there of the quilt and then the lining. This comes around the hood. Now over here, I've got to get my, let's see here, reach my arm up the quilted sleeve and grab my lining sleeve, pull it through, there we go. So that's what I was looking for, yes. So now everything has to be pressed, but, um, so the, the jacket itself and the lining um, is attached around the entire front of the jacket. I'm going to see if I can get that here for you to see. So this is the hood, and it's attached around the entire front of the jacket. And then the rest of it, I'm going to secure it at um, the neck, I will make sure that it is secured in a few places there. But otherwise, the lining will hang loose inside the jacket so that there's plenty of give and it's uh, free to move. And then I do need to do my hemming at the bottom. So I'll need to get to that as well. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and get this everything pressed nicely. I am going to secure, I'll probably tack this uh, neck edge here really well. Um, between the lining and the jacket. So, and I'll do that across the neck in a few spots so that it is secure there. And I think it's going to be adorable. So let me do that. Let me press it. I think I'm also going to top stitch around the front of the jacket. I'll do that and I'll bring it back and show it all to you. So far, I've finished the jacket. I am going to work on a button for the front but it's adorable. I just love how it turned out. I'm going to show you in a minute uh, some of the detail that I did, but it's, it is it is lined, completely lined, and it has the hood. So there is a hood for this jacket, and um, I love it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think about the jacket. I had to make sure you got to see the bottom of it as well. Here is the bottom of the jacket.
All right, I've laid the jacket out on the table so you can kind of see the whole thing. Um, I had lined it. Um, if you remember, I folded in the fabric or the lining extra uh, so that I would be able to create a facing before the lining there. I've got my pins here, which is where I'm going to put my button. And I have to identify what button I'm going to use. It's obviously going to be a nice big one, but I haven't found one yet. And here are the sleeves. And I've simply um, lined it. Um, I've used a hem facing tape for the fabric, for the quilt fabric. And then I've just stitched under a quarter of an inch on the lining there. Um, and let's see what else for the neckline here. I did secure it. I secured the lining to the hood back by just stitching in the ditch for about three inches right there on the neck so that it's secured. So it, the lining is secured here. The lining is sewn to the entire front of the quilt, but those are the only places where it's actually attached to the jacket. The hems here on the bottom and at the top are um, loose uh, so that the, the garment is flowing and the, the lining doesn't tear. And um, there's the pockets, cute little pockets that I have. This again is the new look pattern, 6585. I did the B length and it, I, I did probably um, cut off maybe three inches from the hem and it still is right there at my knees. So it's, it's a good length. And I did cut a size small. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching as I put together this jacket. Maybe you'll grab that pattern and find a quilt that you have or maybe get one from an estate sale or the Goodwill and have fun putting together your own quilt jacket. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I really appreciate your watching my videos. If you do like the content that I provide, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share my videos with your friends and your quilt uh, guilds. That would really help my channel to grow and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So have a great weekend. I've got some other ideas planned for next week. So until then, happy quilting.